So our topic for the day is psychoanalytic criticism. Psychoanalytic criticism. Uh, so take the file. Please make it visible. The last one. Okay. So psychoanalytic criticism. It's a form of literary criticism which uses some of the techniques of psychoanalysis in the interpretation of literature. We can talk about psychoanalysis as well as psychoanalytic criticism. Okay. So psychoanalysis. Hi, uh, do you have any idea about I hope you might have come across this term even before. Not just not if not as a literary term or in the context of literature. We know what you mean by psychology, psychoanalysis. All these terms are not really unfamiliar to us. So, of course, when we deal with something in the context of literature, or criticism as a term we use in the context of analyzing literature. Even before that, we have this term to be discussed in the, uh, at, the at first hand. So, psychoanalytic, psychology, psychology or psychoanalytic criticism. It's a form of literary criticism. Again, we are making use of this for the sake of Analyzing literature with the with the premise of or with the uh, ideas or tenets we are having in the theory of psychoanalysis. And what this psychoanalysis it is itself it is a form of therapy. You know psychology or psycho psychotherapy. We know we are having uh, treatment for different mental disorders or mental diseases or problematic mental uh, see. Uh, this uh, mental uh, the crisis we have this treatment available in the area called uh, psychoanalysis okay and see psychoanalysis itself is a form of therapy which aims to cure mental disorders by investigating the interaction of conscious and unconscious elements in the mind we have come across these two terms conscious unconscious even before while discussing deconstruction and I told you while dealing with the post psychoanalysis we will uh, study we will come across more of its details okay and uh, so that is it Actu actually conscious and unconscious conscious mind I told you at the surface level it is the readily available or waking mind in the waking state we are woken up state we are in the we are completely using our conscious state of mind but apart from that we are some hidden or uh, not readily available uh, memories or thoughts or something in the mind and it is in the unconscious or sometimes in the subconscious so these three strata of mind we have to uh, have the idea about to get into psychoanalysis and here they talk about psychology, psychoanalysis as a therapy itself. That is the kind of curing. So you are trying to cure. We are how to we have this treatment sector, treatment area of treatment called a psychoanalysis or a therapy for treating mental disorders. And how do they do it? By investigating. You can see here investigating. Please see the term there or the description there. Investigating interaction of conscious and unconscious elements in the mind. So and you may be having confusion or confused. You will be confused between these two terms. Psychology and the psychiatry. Psychiatry actually that doesn't have much to do with our uh, discussion but still we have to know what the difference between these two it, uh, in the beginning itself that's better for us too so psychology is just the interaction between it. it's okay it's not they do not prescribe medicine psychology that is a kind of counseling an interaction between the counselor and the patient or the person who is having uh, some problems who is facing some problem and they go and have a discussion or a, an open uh, talk a free talk this is the technical term they talk about hmm? and uh, in the case of psychiatry it is even uh, for the even uh, it's for the even uh, problematic state of mind or people who are cry suffering uh, somewhat crucial problems which who, uh, who can who are not even in a state or position to talk or grasp or understand or accept something 
so psychiatry is something different that is they most often uh, suggest medicine it's almost like a treatment um, medicine uh, oriented treatment but psychology is even it's like even for fear phobia some phobia you may approach even for exam fears it's about uh, just uh, the main mat matter of psychology psychological talk that's a psychotherapy okay psychologically you are uh, talk, you sometimes you may be freely talking the problem or issues you are facing to a psycho a psychologist and the person may be suggesting you some uh, techniques sometimes like uh, uh, yeah it's not something to be worried so this is the way this uh, treatment goes and here they talk about conscious and unconscious elements the conscious elements if those are readily available there is no need for a free uh, see an in-depth talk or something you sometimes when you discuss some of your problems with your friends or something it doesn't come under any kind of psychological treatment or anything but when you have when it when the problem is beyond that uh, beyond your uh, friends or relatives capability to solve and you are uh, you are hurting yourself you are unable to solve the problem then you uh, we approach this uh, this area the treatment sector called a psychotherapy or even uh, for more crucial problems we are into psychiatry so the other part it is just about talking so psychoanalytic is about the mental disorders are again uh, taken into account but that is not uh, even crucial but the patient is in a way able to talk and uh, uh, take the things once they are given some uh, idea or basic uh, concepts about okay so that's it so now someday, sometimes you see you might have come across uh, children so small kids who are having fear of uh, darkness fear of some animals these are some kinds of phobias and sometimes when it goes to extreme level that also needs treatment so then this is about psychoanalytic treatment psychoanalysis and the classic method of doing this is the is to get the patient to, to talk freely in such a way that the repressed fears and conflicts which are causing the problems are brought into the conscious mind and openly faced rather than remaining buried in the unconscious that is the first part of this so when uh, a patient is with a psychotherapist or psycho psychologist i'm talking about psychologist very specifically please listen it's not psychiatry i'm talking about psychologist the first few days the person seems very resistant just think about you are going and talking about a very a very buried problem you are uh, facing a problem you cannot talk openly about that to anyone and you are brought to a complete stranger a doctor or whoever it may be the person is a total stranger for the person a total stranger for the patient and we cannot expect the person to talk about all the problems all the fears on the very first day itself so that is it that is why in the in this particular treatment in this particular sector the rapo building i'll type the term here rapo r a p p o r t rapo rapo so uh, the pronunciation goes like rapo this rapo building is one of the essential means that is the psychologist the person the professional is making himself or herself very credible that is they uh, try to assert their credibility in the in the mode of this free talk they are very friendly they talk to you like with um, that much compassion and you feel like yeah he, he or she is very uh, approachable a person uh, he is fit he, he or she is fitting enough to uh, talk my problem or sometimes they may find a solution so that the patient feels like telling the problem so this is how I, until then it is buried most often sometimes we talk about uh, see sharing your problems and uh, unburdening your mind but when it is beyond that limit some people are highly hidden they cannot always be open to everyone or sometimes it uh, some problems are like that you might have come across the the 
victims of different uh, attacks or different exploitation these people take long years to uh, talk about their problems see they do not reveal and this this is buried inside their the problems the hurt the humiliation that is buried inside their minds and uh, they cannot overcome that in that way they become mentally challenged and this is how later once they are in this treatment sector the person the professional is trying to take out to to, uh, to get out that problems get the problems out of the unconscious where these problems the secrets or sometimes the problems which are sometimes it may not be very crucial a secret or something but it is something of a uh, the person finds it very difficult to tell uh, to openly talk about that to some people may even the close relatives even to the parents even to the uh, siblings so that they are uh, see burying inside and they are a uh, mind is always in one way or other getting uh, buried and they uh, see burned and later they find it very difficult to uh, see control their own behavior and once noted down they are taken to some psychological center so then this uh, this treatment begins so uh, to talk about psychoanalytic criticism we have to know what the psychoanalysis psychology means and this is what is happening at a very basic level of psychological treatment okay this practice is based upon the specific theories of how mind the instincts and sexuality work so this is a completely about the study of human mind if you want to talk at a very basic level this is about the human mind that is why we have educational psychology and that's how teachers sometimes claim whatever you do the i can understand sometimes you might have come across teachers who ask you even if you uh, yeah try to make yourself very un uh, see yourself like you have understood everything taught in the class some teachers uh, ask you you haven't understood that just with your uh, facial expressions they can find it out that means they know the human psychology the facial expression the change in the expression of a person the just that uh, just just by looking at the eyes of a person or the some of the expression sad or uh, pathetic expression the persons can find it out so in that regard psychology is just about the basic understanding about human mind but once you how but you how if you how to be a professional if you how to cure a person if you how to f uh, find solutions for the problems of a person or suggest problems for of a for a person you how to be professionally or clinically proven or professionally uh, well uh, exposed a uh, psychologist otherwise uh, you cannot always tell that uh, i know all this uh, in my class i can i, I could identify the uh, children they are problems everything so that tomorrow on boards i am going to be a psychoanalytic or i am going to be a counselor you cannot you cannot do that this is completely i uh, see only very professional and practiced uh, persons can be in this area okay so they have to be, they have to call for pass the course and uh, they have to be certified enough to be a counselor fine so these theories were developed by the austrian sigmund freud mainly the major figure the person who is behind this the master brain behind this is freud sigmund freud please note down the spelling f r e u d freud sigmund freud is the pronunciation uh, his life span is between 1860 56 to 1939 and uh, he was the person who introduced psychology psychoanalytic criticism or the major premise of even psychology psychology as a branch itself psychoanalysis as a branch itself it is the the main the milestone it's with uh, uh, this person even before that people had been the uh, who thought about this possibility to talk about it in literature or to take it as a means of curing minds but who developed this or who uh, actually gave its form real form in uh, whether inside in literature or in the area of treatment we have to acknowledge this person who is named uh, for freud sigmund freud please understand please uh, remember his name sigmund freud okay so despite of the serious methodological irregularities 
Freud remains a major cultural force and his impact on how we think about how we the impact on see Freudian uh, contributions we are going to talk about see how we think about ourselves has been incalculable that means of course we have a lot of later th theories later developments in the area called psychoanalysis even later even see how uh, so you have a lot of followers for Freud uh, who really uh, shifted from his views who found something entirely different from his uh, the, uh, his uh, ideas but still who developed or who in a way uh, initiated this method we have to acknowledge Freud himself so impact on how we think about ourselves even sometimes we feel uh, our problems if we can solve it our own there is no problem of uh, see all these mental on psychological disorders all this but we know it is totally an impossibility for us to find solutions for our own problems always right so here Freud's model of the mind that is psyche has three functional aspects now we are into the theory please listen the terms you can see here he gives a model of the mind he gives human the mind human mind he gives a model and here uh, to talk about its different uh, sectors or the different parts of a mind if you want it is just with a uh, conscious subconscious unconscious okay different parts but here actually it is model of the mind he you, ca you can uh, understand it, uh, it under the title the functioning aspects of the mind this is very important and a very interesting as well. I am going to talk about the functional aspect of a mind. How our behavior is uh, differing or how a person's uh, behavior, approach, attitude, everything can be different at a different with the functional aspects and its uh, vast difference which is uh, we, we will come across now. Okay, You can see these three terms the in bold letters, eat, ego, superego. Of course, these are the three functional aspects of the model of mind according to model of functioning of the mind according to Freud. See, so, basic level, basic level of categorization because Freud is the person who introduced this psychoanalytic theory into literature or as a, type, as a theory it was developed by this person himself. So it you can see the, the first one and uh, you can see it as a pleasure principle as its main definition. See the, so it, three functional aspects, the first one is it, the second one is ego and the third one is superego. And you can see different three different uh, terms underlined and attached with the, uh, these three immediately. First one, pleasure principle. With the id you can see pleasure principle. With the ego you can see reality principle. And with the super ego you can see morality principle. We will come across each. We will describe each differently each uh, uh, at, at this point. So id is the seat of instincts. What do we mean by instincts? What do we mean by instincts? Instinctually, behaving instinctually. What do we mean by that? You are behaving like I see sometimes you know uh, without thinking instinct. That means you everyone as human beings we have our own natural instincts. And we have already come across this in different other theories. Instincts, anger, fear, uh, see passion, everything, love, fear, anger, joy, all these we take as the natural instincts of a human being. Pleasure, joy, extreme emotions, all these come under natural instincts. And uh, it, as you get the definition here, it is uh, the seat of instincts. See, it acts on the pleasure principle. It is clearly illogical, immoral and is preoccupied with the consideration of satisfying instinctual needs. That is why we talk about instinctual needs. We always make mark this distinction between an animal and a, a socially or cultured human being. We have our social family, family established system. And uh, you have something very uh, tabooed called uh, incest. Incest, you know, the uh, sexual relationship between 
blood relatives okay so this is the way it becomes the, uh, the part of pleasure principle if the person is with the dominated eat it it or pleasure principle the person behaves very illogically the pleasure the person behaves in a very uh, ab see absurd manner that means not in the uh, in not just in the mode of our absurd literature but absurd uh, absurd the concept we know now but here it is about doing whatever you like to at the moment without thinking anything about your uh, the social position familial background nothing the person wants to do something and he does it he or she does it that is the point at which you are a person with a dominated eat that is pleasure principle you are functioning just on pleasure principle fine and the next one uh, when we uh, describe all these three you will understand the difference and next you can see here ego is the executive aspect of one's personality that governs controls and regulates and meditates between the instincts and the surrounding environment since it is in touch with the external world of reality don't worry this is the second one you see here as the reality principle that means you have the instincts everything as a human being everyone is having every kind of instinct sometimes you talk about some persons to be oh very temperamental very temperamental a person whatever we say the person reacts back in a very unpredictable manner who he cannot control his anger she is very problematic i can i cannot i do not like to talk to her because she is uh, she gets angry at uh, at every moment at uh, see this is the way we sometimes make it so that that behavioral difference actually we are talking here see this e ego principle it is on reality you have the instinct the anger fear joy pleasure everything as the as it is in the case with a person who is with a dominant ego the same natural pleasure instinct everything the 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 uh, what is a fascination to a pleasure fascination for some kind of other instincts everything is there in the person who is with the ego also but that is in one way it is a reality principle always you are at times at least you are uh, you are intellectual power you are making yourself yeah if i go if i do that i will be having i will have to face such and such difficulty okay so just uh, i will get you a very simple example uh, in a classroom to uh, very good friends one person one i see uh, a, say for example a and b okay a and b are very good friends b brings a very beautiful uh, what do you say very beautiful some decorative a very beautiful chain in the chain to the class and it shows it shows it to a and tells that this is the gift that i got from my father whatever maybe and uh, if a is a person who is with a dominant uh, eat principle pleasure principle and the person wants to possess the chain if he or she gets a chance the moment the person steals it will never think about the consequence I, if i am caught i will be i will be tortured by the teachers i will be uh, i will be ashamed in front of the whole class nothing will be taken into account the person acts on the just on the basis of the the, uh, the what i want to do i want to get that right now so that the person doesn't think about anything there is no second thought for a person who if the person is with the dominant eat principle or the eat or the pleasure principle just think about the next if, if that person the same person is with the ego uh, dominating that is the reality principle again this instinct natural instinct for the person to again to possess see, you see something beautiful and you want that of course that is uh, of course uh, we we know the, the if you see something beautiful like a chain or something oh i also wanted it this is a natural instinct that is possible in every person but if the same person is with a high or dominant ego oh i wanted that chain but why the person most often stays away from stealing it just because if i am caught 
Oh, I will be taxed in front of the whole class. I will be ashamed. So let me stay away from that. That is the only reason. Okay? That is, you are worried. You are in the reality play. The other one is never thinking about any reality. Oh, next moment what will happen? The person is never worried about or doesn't care about. But here the second type, if the same person is with an e a dominant ego, what happens is this. That is, this governs and controls. The person wants that to change very badly, but he or she is worried about the, re the, the next consequence of reality, or at least they are aware of the reality. Next one, the next moment I will have to suffer because of this. That is the reason why the person stays away from stealing. And the next category which is the morality principle, you see if that A and B they are uh, very fr very good friends and the same uh, B shows this uh, beautiful chain to A and this A also of course as a human being, oh very beautiful a chain, I also wanted that but never this per never ever this person thinks about stealing or uh, taking it from this person this uh, b because he is ruled by morality moral or value principles the person if i steal that uh, it is very bad it will affect my if it will affect our friendship as a human being i am not supposed to steal anything i am not supposed to make theft so this is the way that say if the person, if the same person A is with a dominant superego, the person every deed, uh, see his or her deeds are some way or other controlled by your morality principles. Every time they try to control their behavior, they think about consequences even before, be, even beyond country consequences as human beings. They uh, hold some values and they never go beyond that. You get the point? So this is how and again you cannot always say that every uh, a human being, if the human being lives, say the lifespan is some 60 to 90 or 100 years, all the moments, every time only superego is dominant in a person. Or every time a person is functioning on eat principle, eat or pleasure principle. Or every moment the person is dominated with the ego. This ego actually is not the commonly you use this ego or very egoistic. Okay, fine, we can make the connections. But in a Freudian discussion, in the context of discussing psychoanalysis, this ego is one of the, uh, the functional aspects of mind. You know, now you can analyze every behavior, every moment, or which part actually is dominating in you. You sometimes you can at least, you, when you are in an examination hall, teacher has to, teacher sometimes, uh, if, okay, okay, a person comes and uh, comes to, for some official purpose and teacher is signing in, uh, just uh, outside the class and uh, see some 25 students are writing the examination. Just think about some 10 people who are with a, eat or pleasure principle at the peak they will try like anything to get answers from others no, uh, no not ashamed of any malpractice and again if the teacher notes down i will be caught or i will be thrown out of the examination hall the persons of these 10 people if they are pleasure principle if they are ego it is dominating they never think about the consequence okay and the second category other 10 people with the ego dominating oh our own class teacher if, uh, if again this tendency to get answer as human beings of course that is there but oh, let me stay away from taking or uh, talking because if this uh, teacher comes to us and if uh, she or he notes me down that's very I will be in one way or other they will think bad about me that is the only reason it's not because you are very moral okay and if some other so 10 plus 10 and 5 people who are with the super ego dominating they will never turn even if the teacher is not in there in the class you will write down your answer and go if i get uh, just five marks out of 100 that is enough as we always tell you we always tell you that if it even if it is one mark out of 100 if it is you are on that is worthy then the then the 90 percentage you get out of some get out from somewhere else by malpractice or some other nasty means so it's not just about not always about super ego ego or ego and again the same five people next semester sometimes you may see the persons 
copying down so this is about this is how human behaviors change human behavioral change mark uh, shift you can see sometimes you uh, talk about people of oh, how good a person human being he has been he had been now it's very unapproachable sometimes their morality their moral values change sometimes you are reading you it's, it's just you are reading that might have changed a person who is very calm and quiet and cool behaves very uh, radically sometimes the person may be having the reason sometimes without reason so you cannot always predict human behavior hope the, with these two uh, examples it is clear this uh, e ego and super ego that is you have the tendency of course as a human being as a student writing the examination these five also have this uh, wish to get good marks and all but this persons never shift or never throw away their morality for the sake of any personal or beneficial anything uh, any benefit of their own you get the point so this is how eat ego and super ego this functional aspect of a human mind uh, differ see this is the way uh, freud uh, describes this human mind and how human behavioral shift the patterns of our behavior shift according to situations persons uh, as well as our uh, our context all this we, he describes and how this uh, marks a behavior this this is really uh, important in analyzing the human mind once you are having a problem okay once you are facing a problem once you are into once we are into the treatment sector all these are analyzed so each and every thing sometimes you will have to uh, talk to the uh, total stranger but before that this psychologist makes the uh, this brings the rapport between this is a kind of credibility if i tell my problem to this person uh, the person may find a solution or he or she is not sometimes you have uh, some uh, some friends oh i am very credible i tell everything i share all my problems to uh, him or her and later you tell at which point in my which kind of a time that i uh, felt like telling all my problems to that uh, that that uh, nasty being that is now the person is uh, blackmailing me telling that uh, if you do not get me some this kind of uh, if if you do not get me this help or that help i am going to tell all this to your parents all this to your uh, see classmates this is the way that also happens that is why we need professionalism in this sector that is why we have professionals in this sector right so this is a, this is something which is to be with, between that is again you should not be hurt you share you sometimes you talk about at a casual level you talk about sharing your problems with your friends your colleagues or your uh, see parents just for the sake of getting unburdened to avoid your burden of or the pain of your mind and just think about the situation after some 2 or 3 years or 2 or 3 months you have this problem coming back uh, in double strength to with the same person who whom you trusted and that is the point at which this professionalism is demanded in psychology or the sector called the psychotherapy okay so it can be said to the ideal part of a say again super ego can be said to be the ideal part of one's personality rather than real actually second one reality principle ego you have the instinct and if you have a chance you will try to you are staying away from a crime or something very bad only because you are worried about the consequence your image your image that is your face value you are worried about if you if you have this tendency to do that but the other one it is ideal uh, part of one's personality that persons hold the value and that is why they stay away from doing this problem doing this uh, mystery mischievous right and uh, rather than real life does not seek pleasure uh, but perfection actually super ego uh, seeks perfection and it uh, inhibits the impulses of id and yeah it inhibits the impulses of the id and uh, persuade the ego to substitute moralistic goals for realistic ones okay so actually this works out between this ego e is you how eat of course as a human being that person also is liable to have all these emotions different different passions human passions everything but they are highly controlled okay and uh, super ego represents the internalization of the social standards of morality and uh, propriety 
Superego represents the internalization of social standards. Very um, morally uh, worthy, the person, of course, they never want to, the, sorry, no, they, they, these persons never want to challenge the established norms of society or something and internalize all those rules and they never make complaints as well. Okay. Uh, yeah. So next then, all of Freud's works depend upon the notion of the unconscious. Actually unconscious is one of the important parts in Freud. So on behalf of this actually he develops this theory, every how important unconscious are to get the, uh, the uh, what do you say, the buried aspects, the, the memories, fears, all those concepts in your mind only after that and once you can uh, reveal these points or get this they get access to the uh, the contents in your unconscious which is really buried and only then you can start treatment this is how he talks about unconscious which is the part of the mind beyond consciousness and which nevertheless has a strong influence upon our action actually unconscious has that much influence upon it. as you have uh, conscious works out in your every in your waking mind you always uh, you are not aware no, you see unconscious beyond uh, it, uh, see apart from freudian term you use like unconscious stage unconscious stage but this unconscious is actually a uh, the the part of mind where all your the uh, all your problems memories everything is buried so it has a strong influence upon your person, our actions. That's what Freud tells. It has much influence upon your action. The chief mechanisms that affect the dis see uh, affect the disguises of unconscious wishes are condensed. Now, now we are talking about some terms. Okay, as a literary term, we cannot uh, go deep into this. Uh, this is a very vast theory which will take uh, hours and hours for discussion. But here we are trying to shorten and to get it to the, the way you want it. As a graduate, as a third semester paper, we need only this much. And I am going to get you the basic ideas about this unconscious and some of the mechanisms with which our behavior it is controlled or somewhere we are controlled between our uh, see deeds or the unconscious thoughts and all okay one first one is condensation it is the omission of parts of the unconscious material and the fusion of several unconscious elements into a single entity condensation displacement and another one i will tell you uh, see uh, i think you all yeah of course, symbolism. So, uh, three, three or four terms you can see here. Condensation, displacement, symbolism. All these. If you're displacing, that means actually uh, psychoanalytic theory. Again, one more thing you have to understand. The most of the discussion of uh, Freudian discussion, it is uh, based on or he tries to analyze everything on behalf of human sexuality. And you, as a social being, you are in a social, so, so, social or well-established moral code or in a standard social code. You are under the moral codes of a society which you are part of. And you are not supposed to or you never go for doing something against that. You I talk about the majority and we have exceptions who never care about the moral codes, moral standards. And that's how we have cr criminals or criminal offenses all across. Otherwise, you try to have a, a social code or moral code or you try to stick to the moral codes and standards. Here, these terms actually, uh, to just try to get it as, a, as it is, that is condensation, displacement, symbolism, whichever it may be. This is in one way or other, you talk, sometimes it tells about, you might have come across very small kids who play with the dolls or who play like a mother father that is a, that is a, again a, one of the uh, very common ways in which during our the childhood most children adopt like a play as a as a means of playing that is yeah uh, you are you are mother 
you uh, he is a father and again you have this kind of a or without knowing anything like uh, anything about the marital relationship or anything you have this tendency so in the very beginning itself freud tells that tells that man is essentially human being man in general human being they are essentially sexual animals and uh, they have this instinct that this this very instinct sexual instinct at the very uh, very uh, what is it basic age itself let's say let's say talk about infant sexuality and he uh, freud tries to assert that at the very young stage young age itself children very uh, small kids are having this tendency or this kind of a uh, this is already there in them and in one way or other this comes out and displacement sometimes even why why do you have all these uh, see uh, what you say the pornographic pictureization everything available in this uh, platforms visual representation that is human beings they are in one way or other they are fascinated for all these and freud tries to freud tells that you are in a social system and you cannot always act as all the animals that's why we may mark this distinction between animals and the uh, instinctual pleasures they afford and the uh, instinctual pleasure that uh, human beings always cannot afford okay so you are fascinated for a, a beautiful woman or a beautiful man but you cannot always go and uh, see have a family with the same person sometimes you are married sometimes the other person is married so in this way freud tells that essentially all human beings have all these basic instincts everything but as a social being they are controlling themselves and because of that as itself they have all these repressed this they, they have a lot of uh, unfulfilled desires in their unconscious can you ever expect every uh, human being talking about every desire every unfulfilled or wishes everything yeah, most of mo most of often about these uh, see sexual cause ex sexuality sexual pleasure of needs everything no you cannot always expect and that is why uh, this point tells that human unconscious is a kind of this a uh, see burial ground or most always like you have a lot of uh, you are unfulfilled wishes uh, buried inside your unconscious and he tries to tackle the the or he tries to attack all the human problems all the problems human beings coming across they come across in connection with this unfulfilled desires and you uh, you you burden your own mind you repress yourself and that is one of the major causes of this mental uh disorders he talks about he tells in that way he tries to in interpret human problems in that way okay so this is a one part of psychoanalysis and later a lot of development came in this theory fine so this is how you have freudian psychoanalysis and this uh, displacement of symbolism sometimes you try to uh, even sometimes you have uh, beautiful pictures sometimes you have you have this uh, tendency to uh, see the pictures of some uh, what do you say actors actresses see you enjoy beauty you know that you cannot uh, you cannot marry that uh, actress you cannot marry this actor but still you are enjoying see this is how these people fulfill their wishes in one way or other and that, 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 that is why uh, freud talks about displacement symbolism you take the symbol for you are on say conceptualization of beauty all this so this is uh, you cannot always talk all about all these in one class but still uh, at a basic level you please understand unconscious subconscious and conscious conscious is readily available and unconscious is sometimes almost like a buried uh, part of your personality and only when you are having when you have this uh, repression to the peak and you have this uh, the, you have you cannot control your behavior you cannot control your anger your frustration then you find it very difficult to uh, con uh, you to manage yourself then you be have we have to the psychological sector and there you uh, talk about your problems freely to a psychotherapist or psychoanalyst and then uh, sometimes they may be able to so solve your problem or suggest some solutions to your tension or something so almost always a freudian term actually he is trying to uh, see 
attach most of the problems of human mind with it. this repressed personal repression of your your own instincts natural inst instincts and later other developments have been the with left and many other psychoanalytic critics came as followers of freud of course when you have this theory when you come across some Uh, in terms of this theory, we are almost we feel them like the followers of Freud, but most of them uh, have very different views from the psychology, the very basic psychology, the classic psychology, psychoanalysis developed by Freud. Okay, and the next one also I would like to describe the dreams. We have dreams, right? And the dreams uh, of also Freud tries to analyze on behalf of. Wait, wait. Yeah, on behalf of you are repressed the unconscious desires or wishes. That means you think and think about something, and the uh, the same day you might have come across this dreaming about that event or something connected with that. And uh, manifest and the latent content of dream. It's a very interesting an idea. With that, we will come to the end of the discussion of psychoanalytic analysis as well. Okay. So manifest and latent content. Okay, you have a dream at night, and the next day you start describing the dream. Wait, wait. What is that disturbance in the sound? Mute yourself, please. Yeah. So manifest. Okay, you have a dream at night, and you start telling about the dream to some of your friends. Okay. And. You start telling, telling also one, two, three, two, uh, four uh, points you tell, and all of a sudden you tell. Oh, after that also I dreamt for a long time, but I forgot. Oh, you try to recollect. You please try to recollect. No, 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 no. I cannot. So that we have manifest and the latent content of a dream. Manifest. The term of course tells you get to see the idea. Manifest. That is the readily available part of your dream. You can recollect. You can talk to. You can. You do not forget. Uh, once you are woken up, once you are awake, you are. You can. You can still recollect that. Oh, I. I met. Uh, I was in America. I was in a very good position. And uh, the. Uh, they see all of a sudden uh, some plane was coming to the. Uh, coming across. Coming almost. It was near to the the building that I I was sitting. After that, oh, after that I forgot. So that is the latent content. Later, then what happened? You are also curious. The other person, the person who dreamt also is very curious to recollect, but the person cannot. And that is again in the unconscious. That is also you cannot. You may be have. You may have it in the unconscious, but you cannot readily collect it back. Okay. So this is how you can talk about your dreams. Why does uh, Freud uh, talk about dream in this sector? Dream also. He talks about part of your unconscious or some time of some kind of a, that also has a lot to do with your conscious and unconscious mindset or the personality, your thoughts, your thoughts which are sometimes buried inside your unconscious. So almost all this, we, these are ways which we uh, sometimes we talk about all this, but we never uh, drew connection of this with the, our behavior, our thoughts, thinking, repression, all this. But here uh, Freud makes all these as professional terms under his theory of psychoanalysis. So that's all for the time being with the psychoanalytic criticism and uh, see all the movements are over with the psychoanalysis by psychoanalytic criticism. This term, uh, which is again uh, in one way or other, it is mo most often connected with the Sigmund Freud. Thank you.